our staff, uh, chamber staff, who is on this call to introduce themselves. Um, here with me. I think right now we just have, it's myself and you, Mike, right? Do you have Carolyn? Or Maureen, no, sorry. No. Okay. Maureen, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? All right, hold on. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Um, as Jenny mentioned, my name is Maureen. I am a part of the membership team and uh, looking forward to working with uh, each and every one of you. I am going to put my um, contact information um, in the chat and um, feel free to reach out to me for um, whatever your needs are. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Maureen. Mike? Thanks, Jenny, and, and welcome, everyone. Thanks for taking an hour out, out of your day to spend some of your Friday with us. Mike Cabello, Director of Communications with the Chamber, and as Maureen said, I'll, I'll include my info in the chat as well. Uh, if you don't know, you can always save the chat at any point for yourself. There's those three little dots on the bottom in the chat. So thank you again for joining us today. And Jenny Carolyn is coming in right now. Okay. So we have Dan Lemblade, who is our president and CEO. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Bouncing from one meeting to the next. It's so great to see all of you. Hope you're all doing well. I'll put my information in there. I'm the president and CEO of the chamber. Thank you, Dan. And Carolyn Michaels. Oh, good morning, everyone. As Dan said, we're jumping from meeting to meeting. I think this is the fourth one this morning. So uh, it's nice to see you all here, and I look forward to the presentation. Thank you, Jenny. I'm Carolyn Michaels, Executive VP. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. So we have a great presentation today um, by our business coach, Juan Ortega. This will be an inform information-rich session as business coach Juan Ortega shares the top 10 uh, growth strategies, strategies that are working right now and how to supercharge them using your chamber membership. So just want to quickly introduce Juan. Today's speaker grew up in Orlando, Florida, where he began working in the hotel industry at the age of 18. Over the course of 20 years, he reached an executive level for several of the most distinguished luxury hotel brands in the world, including Hyatt Weston and Ritz-Carlton. In early 2012, Juan discovered a profession of business coaching and made the life-changing decision to leave his successful corporate career to launch his own coaching practice. Soon after, he partnered with Action Coach, the world's largest business coaching organization. Today, Juan is ranked as a top 30 global coach with clients in both North and South America. He brings proven business strategies to our local community and his mission is to help every business owner create the company of their dreams by offering time-tested coaching programs that are industry agnostic and proven to work within 17 weeks. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mr. Juan Ortega. That was awesome. Thank you, Jenny. I may need to take you with me everywhere I go because you did such a great job. So thank you for that. And uh, Mike, am I able to share screens at this point? Yes. Okay. Here we go. All right. So at this point, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, again, thank you, Jenny, for that amazing introduction. And yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is monetizing your membership and how to turn new contacts into new business. And that should be something that appeals to everyone here on the call today. And the first thing I wanna do is I do want to uh, give a, a huge shout out to the chamber, to everyone who works so hard to make this such an amazing chamber for this opportunity. And uh, so thank you uh, to everybody on the call. Uh, thank you to everyone who made this uh, possible. And it's my privilege and honor to be your presenter today. So with, with that being said, um, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, you could be anywhere, but you chose to be here. So my goal as your coach for the next uh, 55 minutes or so is to reward you with as much value as possible value that you can go and apply in your profession, in your business. 
So specifically with that is we're looking and what we're going to talk about today is uh, closing more sales, increase revenue, and just really making the most of your chamber membership because that's that's what we want to do here. So a uh, little bit about the uh, the actual agenda today. We're going to go pretty fast paced. Uh, anybody who's ever attended any of my talks, you know that I provide tons of value and information in a short amount of time. Uh, definitely take notes. So if you don't have anything to write with, uh, grab something uh, to take notes with. Participate. Today's going to be a very unique presentation where you're actually going to be part of the presentation. So you, it, this is going to be very interactive and I'll, and I'll explain how in a minute. Uh, we will do Q&A at the end. Uh, we're also going to give an opportunity at the end for everybody to introduce yourselves. So stick around to the very end. And, you know, again, as your coach, uh, my goal is that you uh, apply and take action on at least one powerful idea that you pick up from today's presentation. So I do have a little bit of a surprise for you is that you get to be part of the presentation today. So uh, most speakers will tell you to put your phones away. I'm actually going to tell you to grab your phones, which most of you probably had nearby anyways. So grab your phones and here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to, so open up a, a browser and go to www.menti.com. It's on my screen here, M-E-N-T-I.com. You can see it at the top of the screen. So, so using your phone, not your computer, using your phone, go to menti.com. And then when you get to that page, it's going to ask you for a code. The code you want to punch in is 87026913. And again, that number is up at the top. So what I would love to do while everybody gets, gets on there is um, give me a thumbs up if you made it on. Like, yeah. And if anybody has any trouble with that, uh, Mike, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, send Mike a message, not me, because I can't speak and troubleshoot at the same time. So I got a question here for you. Uh, let's do a little poll just out of curiosity. The question is, how long have you been a member of the chamber? All right. So I know we got like over 20 people on the call. So far, four people have participated in the poll. Let's keep those responses going. Guys, this should be really interesting. This is one of several questions that I have for you. Uh, throughout the presentation today. So really interesting to see. So we got some newbies on here. Uh, we got at least four people, five people that are brand new. Uh, less than a year, we got two, less than five, one. And then we got the uh, the veterans, uh, three veterans on the call, five years or more with the chamber. That's amazing. And I, I actually fall into that five years or more uh, myself. So we got 11 people who participated. Keep those coming, guys. So again, menti.com, punch in that code. And we're gonna have a lot of fun with this tool. It's a really interactive way to bring Zoom to life here. All right, let's get going. Thank you for your participation. It looks like we got a lot of brand new people. So we're gonna provide lots of value to you guys. So I'm not gonna read this because Jenny already introduced me, but I do wanna point out the last bullet point. I just added that. So just became a grandfather in November. Yes, I look very young because I am a young grandfather and that's, there's a whole other long story. I'm not going to go into that, but I'm, I wanted to point out that uh, new final bullet point that I added. I'm very proud of. So I'm um, happy to be joining the ranks of many other awesome grandfathers out there. Uh, Action Coach. Yeah, we are the world's leading business coaching organization. We got offices in over 80 countries. And basically what we do is we help business owners uh, with time, team or money. And you're gonna get a little bit of a glimpse of what we do here. And I'm gonna tie it into, again, how that benefits the, the chamber mem membership and how you can apply both. All right, so let's get ready, strap in, put on your seatbelts, grab your pen and pads and get ready to take some notes. So here we go. All right, so here are some reasons why you may want to, or maybe you already did join the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. So the most common reasons people join the chamber is maybe to network. Another great idea is for education, uh, exclusive uh, education like you're receiving today. And maybe another reason is access, access to people, certain people that you might have not met on your own had you not been a chamber member, uh, special events, maybe even information. Uh, so these are all great reasons to join the, the Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce. So here is, oh, and one last one, and of course, generate new opportunities, right? New opportunities, new leads, new customers and clients for your business. That's uh, a very important one as well. So I got another Menti question for you. So grab your phones once again, 
And out of these four reasons, why did you join the chamber? So go ahead and use your phone. So again, go to menti.com and use the code up at the top of the screen. Maybe, maybe it was for more than one reason, but pick your top one. Okay, so pick the top reason. This would be really interesting to see what people are looking to get out of their membership. So, so far, it looks like networking is winning. New opportunities is coming in second. I love the interaction. Look at those colors move around the screen here. So, so far, networking and new opportunities kind of are leading the way. Education is third and maybe access. Yeah. And, and fourth. So great. And, and you know why this is important and beneficial is because if you join the chamber to network, then guys, make sure you network, right? Make sure that you use it and take advantage of it. All the great events that take place uh, every single week, every single month. So look at that. So by far, networking was number one, new opportunity, second, education, and then access uh, as fourth. Fantastic. Thank you for participating. So here's, uh, here's a cute little dog kind of hiding. So the worst possible thing that you can do after you join the membership is to go into hiding, right? Like this cute little guy here. The last thing you want to do is like join and then not do anything and then go and hide, right? That would be defeating the, the whole purpose of becoming part of this great organization. So uh, that is the worst thing that you can do. So the best thing that you can do is to absolutely be active and to participate, to take advantage, to get to know the different people that, that run the chamber and the diplomats that are uh, part of the chamber as well get to know the other members. So really, you know, what you put in is what you're going to get out. And the more you participate, the more value you're going to get from your uh, membership. So here's a kind of crazy but really good idea for you. Have you thought of the concept of creating a chamber game plan, like a little marketing plan or a little game plan where you kind of think about, okay, I just made uh, this great investment and now I want to get my return on investment on it. I want to um, get as much value from the membership as possible. So what if you just grab the piece of paper and you put together a game plan of how you're actually going to do that? So here's some thoughts around that. Some of the things that you could include in that game plan would be things like maybe you set some specific financial goals that you'd like to achieve because you're not part of, of the chamber. Uh, maybe in your game plan, you include uh, the number of ideal new contacts or clients you will make because of all the networking that you're doing. Maybe you set a goal for yourself. How many monthly events or we even weekly events will you attend and be part of? Uh, maybe you also include in your game plan the different groups that you will visit uh, eventually join or learn about. There's a lot of different leads groups and all different types of groups. So for those of you that are brand new, if you haven't attended orientation, attend orientation. If you haven't um, connected with a diplomat, please do that because they'll tell you all sorts of really great stuff where you can participate. But you know, my first big piece of advice to you as your business coach is to create a game plan, like an actual written game plan of uh, for your membership and these are just four quick and simple ideas of things that you can include in that game plan. So then let's say you started doing that. You, you got uh, your game plan, you started participating, became really active. So then it's like, now what? You know, I'm meeting people, we're exchanging cards, of course, you know, socially distance safe and all that stuff, but you know, meeting new people, making new contacts, now what? Well, you know, the interesting thing about that and you know, don't be shy. I know that there's at least one person on the call who has a drawer that looks like this, okay? We know who you are, right? We know everything, right? So if you're the person that's got the drawer filled with business cards from like the Ronald Reagan administration, you gotta do something with those cards, right? Like they've been in your drawer for like 20 years and it's like, they're old now, right? So you gotta clean up that drawer. Let's do something. Let's not just meet people for the sake of meeting and collecting cards and not doing. So what I'm gonna coach you on today, what I'm gonna talk about is that whole, how do you monetize the, uh, the, the people that, that you're meeting with and how do you take that, those relationships to the next level, okay? So uh, dump out the drawer and let's uh, get strategic about this. So, you know, the, the one thing that I tell my clients is like, make sure you follow up, right? You make a, you make a, a new connection. Uh, the worst thing that you can do is not follow up. And, you know, I, I like to follow up with everybody that I meet, it's not just 
prospects, not just people who raised their hand and said, hey, I'm interested in what you do. I follow up with everyone. And if we've ever met and exchanged a, a business card, you know that I, I usually follow up within 24 hours, sometimes even sooner. So how can you follow up? Well, you can follow up by email. That's the easiest, uh, most common way. Uh, you can use good old fashioned phone, pick up your phone and call them. And phone is becoming more and more effective simply because less people are doing it, right? So it'll actually help you stand out and make a, a good first impression by you using the phone. Uh, if you're one of the young hip people on the call, you can definitely text, just make sure that that's appropriate for you, your brand, your company. And uh, you can also stand out by putting something in the mail. Yeah, snail mail is kind of back ever since we've been spending more time at home. People are getting more and more mail and actually starting to pay attention to it. So follow up. It doesn't really matter how you follow up. Uh, as the most important thing is that you, you do follow up in some sort of fashion. So the, the second uh, essential here is decide on what the next step is with that contact. Right. So sometimes you meet people and you go, OK, that might not go anywhere, but let me follow up with them anyways. Let me keep keep in contact. Maybe you meet someone and you go, oh, this person can be a really great strategic alliance or partner. OK, so you may want to have a different strategy for new strategic partnerships that you meet. Maybe you meet someone and you go, oh, this person's an ideal client. So I got to follow follow up with them in a different way. So have different strategic processes depending on who it is that you meet. Maybe you meet someone and there's no interest whatsoever. I would recommend, you know, follow up anyways. And, you know, maybe you keep in touch. Maybe you don't. You know, that's really for you to decide after you've connected with them. But at least follow up that one time. It's very professional for you to do that. And then what I want to focus on today are the people that express interest in what you do. Okay, so let's say you attended an event this morning, like many of us did. There was an event that took place and we met someone that expressed interest in what we do. So now what you need to decide is, do you enter them in your marketing process or your sales process? So I'm gonna talk about the difference between the two. Okay, so before I explain the two, here's a little fun mentee for you. So grab your phones, let's participate guys. My question to you is right now, as it stands, be honest, we don't, this is all anonymous, right? We don't know who it is. So how effective is your follow through process? How good of a job are you currently doing when you meet someone, you get business cards? How good do you actually do? Okay, so we got four people that said needs work. Uh, a couple people said not too shabby. All right, we got two awesome people on the call. I'd love to know who you are. Great. Uh, no one is embarrassed to say. Okay, just yet. Okay, looks like for the most for the most part, people realize it could be better, right? It could be better, and I think that's true for most for most companies. We can always get better, you know, better, better, and better. Okay, so that's what I'm going to help you with is how to follow through. What does the actual marketing process looks like? What does the actual sales process look like? Guys, thank you for participating. Those these are really fun. So here's the difference between the two. So a marketing process is a person enters your marketing process when they are an ideal client and they have given you their information, okay? So they said, here's my contact information. Uh, maybe they're, they're not interested right now, but let's keep in touch. Sometime in the future, I might be a customer. Then you enter them in your marketing process. Now, if someone uh, enters your sales process, it's because they've expressed interest in what you do and would actually like to move forward with more information or a quote or a follow-up meeting. So somebody raises their hand and go, oh man, I need this. I, I, I need what you do. Then that person now enters your sales process, not your marketing process. So it's really important that as business owners, business professionals, we actually have a systemized process for each one and we know which one to enter that person into. So here's a, a basic example of what a marketing process looks like. You know, I, I don't know, for those of you guys that have studied marketing, this thing has been around for a long, long time. It's called the AIDA principle, which basically stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. Okay, so your marketing needs to do these things. The, the role and the purpose of your marketing is to first grab the attention of the person receiving or, or observing or listening to that marketing communication. It's also to, to create interest or to create a need 
then we need to create desire. That's what our marketing needs to do. And then ultimately the final step of marketing is to get people to take action. So it doesn't matter if it's an email blast, okay? If it's social media, videos, your website. So all these different examples, all these different types of marketing strategies that are out there, at the end of the day, they all need to do the same thing. Okay, and a really great way to look at your marketing, if you wanted to really kind of audit your marketing, you can say, how, how many new leads, how many new customers is my marketing attracting each month? And keep track of that. And if you track your number of leads every single month, then you can determine if your marketing is improving, if it's getting worse, or if it's staying the same. Okay, and use that AIDA principle, because what I see sometimes as, as a coach, I see that, you know, oftentimes people do a really great job grabbing people's attention, but then they don't like really create desire or they don't have a call to action. Okay, so don't don't forget to do all of these steps. Your marketing needs to do all of these things. And the idea is that we start people off in the marketing process. And then eventually when they raise their hand and say, hey, tell me more. Now we move them into the sales process. Okay, so let's talk about the sales process. So, and the difference between the two. So really simply put, the purpose of marketing is to generate leads. The purpose of sales is to convert those leads into new customers. And, and I like to explain that and to take a moment to really talk about that because oftentimes people confuse uh, the two or they lump them together and they really have two separate purposes. You know, another kind of way that I explain it is uh, marketing makes the phone ring but the moment you answer it, you're now selling. And as business owners, as business professionals, we gotta be pretty fluent in both. We gotta know how to do marketing for our business, but we also know how to convert those leads. Because if you want more customers, it's a simple equation. It's marketing plus sales equals new customers. And so if you're kind of scratching your head going, how can I get more new customers for my business? It's probably a marketing issue, a sales issue, or both, okay? We need to get better in each of these two areas. All right, so let's talk about what the sales process looks like. So the sales process um, can look in a lot of different ways, but for the most part, it might look something like this. Basically, uh, the prospect or the person kind of raises their hand and says, hey, tell me more, I'd like to learn about what you do. And then there's some sort of qualification process or discovery that takes place. So maybe you jump on the on a quick 15 minute call with them and you at that point, you're kind of checking them out, see if they're an ideal client for you, seeing if what you do helps them. And at the same time, they're checking you out to see to learn more about your business, what services you offer, maybe your pricing, all of that good stuff. So maybe you do this quick discovery process, then you set a time for a more in-depth call. You know, you set an appointment and you, again, you do your due diligence. And then at some point you're going to make an offer, whether it's a presentation or basically it's just asking for the sale. And then the person at that point is either going to say yes, or they're going to give you an objection, which at that point, you're probably going to need to uh, overcome that objection. And then you're going to do a closing and you're going to say, great, you're going to exchange services uh, for money. And then you're going to deliver the products or services that your company delivers, right? So for some of you, it might look just like this. For some of you, not quite. Uh, if you're a restaurant, obviously, you know, you're not really presenting other than just kind of welcoming people and putting a menu in front of them. But we all have some sort of sales process. All businesses sell at the end of the day. So it's important that you understand the different steps involved. And if you're not having a good conversion of sales, then you need to kind of pick your sales process apart and find out where uh, they're falling through and improve that particular step. Okay, so let's talk about something that I really enjoy teaching about, which is psychology, because the reality is, is that although we all think that we're very logical creatures, all the recent research that's been done actually reveals that people mainly make buying decisions with emotion. So it's 80% emotion, 20% logic. So emotion, if there's that much emotion involved in making a purchase, then that means that there's some psychology that we need to learn as business owners and as professionals of uh, in the business world, because the better we get at uh, psychology, the actually better we're gonna get at marketing and sales because they're all uh, intertwined and connected. 
Okay, so what I want to present to you now is something, this is actually something that I've, it, it's taken me, you know, 10 years to come up with this model. And um, this is a lot of what I coach my clients on. Uh, and, and I wanted to, you know, really share it with you because it's made a huge impact in my companies and in the, in the clients in which I coach. So what I'm going to show you here are the different steps, the, the check marks that essentially people need to kind of mark off in their head before they make a purchase. Okay, these are the internal questions that people ask themselves before they, you know, pull out that wallet and their credit card. So the first question, the first thing that must exist is a need. If someone doesn't need what you sell, they won't buy it, right? So as a professional, we have only two choices. Either we uh, walk away and say, yeah, there's no need and, and just say, okay, uh, keep in touch. And if you ever need us, come back. Or if you're a better salesperson, you can actually create a need. And, and so it's actually possible. People may not feel as though they have a need because they don't know enough about what you do. So if you communicate more about what you do and the value, then all of a sudden you might actually create a need. But bottom line, the first question that every person is asking themselves before they make a purchase is, do I need this? So we need to make sure that we help them understand the answer to that question. Okay, really, really important. The second step is urgency. See, someone could have a, a need or a problem, but if it's not urgent in their mind, they still won't make a purchase. They won't make a sale. They won't move forward. So the, the internal question that the buyer is asking themselves is, do I need this now? And again, as business owners and professionals and, and professional salespeople, part of what we need to do in our repertoire, in our presentation, is create urgency. And again, depending on what industry you're in, it may look a little different. But, you know, at the end of the day, we got to understand that if, uh, if the need is there, but the person doesn't have urgency, they won't move forward. So we need to make sure that everything in our marketing creates urgency. Everything in our sales process creates urgency. Everything we say and do in business is either people is moving people either towards making a purchase or away from a purchase. So really, really important that we understand that. The third is trust. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And so as part of our marketing and sales process, we need to build trust. And the internal question that the buyer is asking themselves is, okay, I have a need, it's urgent, but do I really trust this guy or this gal or this company? So part of what our marketing and sales process needs to do is build trust. So one of the things that I do, just to give you a quick example, is when somebody expresses interest and they say, yeah, I'd like to learn more about what you do, I actually send them this really nice box. And in this box is an autographed book, uh, one of my books autographed, and I send them a lot of other goodies, which I'm not going to reveal what's in there. But part of what that does is it establishes credibility, it begins to establish trust. I also have people watch videos of me coaching live and things like that. Trust is really, really key because again, they won't buy if they don't trust you. The next thing that we must absolutely mark off and check off is clarity. Okay, the, the internal question that the buyer is asking themselves is, do I understand what they're proposing? See, you know, most of us are really kind of smart at what we do, and, and we tend to overcomplicate things. And, you know, nowadays, people's attention span is shorter, everybody's kind of in a rush. And so part of what we need to do in order to move closer to the sale is we need to make things sound simple, fun, fast, and easy. Because if you do the opposite, if you make them sound complicated, slow, and tedious, you're going to miss out on a lot of people. A lot of You're going to hear things like, well, you know, let me think about it. Let me get back to you. Okay, so if you're getting a lot of that when you ask for the sale, it might be because you're, you're comp overcomplicating things and maybe making things a little bit more uh, confusing than they need to be. So make things simple, fun, easy to understand, simple. And that way the person can go, yes, I definitely understand what it is that they're proposing. All right, the next one is certainty. So this is kind of common sense here is the internal question is the person's asking themselves, do I know for sure that this will work? Because if they have a need, there's urgency, and, but, but they're not really sure if, you're, if you can actually solve their problem, then why would they do business with you? So again, our marketing and sales needs to absolutely convince them that we can solve their problem. So again, what are some examples of doing that? Maybe you can uh, lead them to 
uh, some client testimonials. Maybe you can take them to your website page where people have left video testimonials or written testimonials. Maybe you show them some case studies, right? All of a sudden people are going to not only hear from you because, you know, it's one thing for, for me to say how wonderful I am, but when people start talking about, you know, how good we are, then it's pretty amazing. So, you know, show your prospects what other satisfied customers have said about you, and that will create that certainty. One of the most powerful things that you can do is create a guarantee. You know, one of the things that we have in our business is a 17-week guarantee, and when we show people that, then it's like, hey, it's a no-brainer, there's no risk. So how can you do that in your own business? What sort of guarantees, whether it's a satisfaction guarantee or a result guarantee, how can you uh, also establish that in your business so that you have absolute certainty? Then the next one is value. The value, notice it's not price. All the research has shown that ultimately people decide not based on price, but based on value. So if someone doesn't decide if someone doesn't buy from you, it's not because your price was too high, it's because your value was too low. Okay, that's a good one. Write that down. Someone says no, it's not because your price was too high, it's because your value was too low. So the internal question that they're asking themselves is, do I need to shop around or does this sound like a good deal? Okay, so again, your marketing and your sales process needs to show them all the value that there is to what you're offering. Because again, if it's just bare bones offer, they're just, if, if all the offers look the same, the buyer is gonna go with who's cheaper. So part of our responsibility is to build up this tremendous amount of value and uh, make it really clear and obvious to them and show them how the value that you offer is unique and they can't get this anywhere else, then it's gonna be a no brainer. All of a sudden price is, no, is not as important because of all this other additional perceived value that they're receiving. And the final step here in the sales process and the psychology of a buyer is the offer. And the internal question that they're asking is, do I deserve it? Now, some of you may look at that and go, that, that's a weird internal question. And you know, if you're buying a stick of gum, it's probably not that uh, prominent of an internal question, but if somebody's buying like a Rolex, if somebody's buying a piece of real estate, if somebody's buying a, a Bentley or a Ferrari or some a high ticket value item, definitely that is an internal psychological question that people are asking themselves is, do I deserve it? So it doesn't matter if it's a $1 item that you're selling or a $100,000 product or service, people internally want to know that they deserve it. So again, we need to like really as professional salespeople and business people, we need to talk to them in a way to let them know that you absolutely do deserve it. You do deserve to have a better life or a better business. And this, uh, by you saying yes to this decision, you will absolutely change your life, change your business in some way. Okay, so there you have it. The psychology of a buyer, all the different things that your marketing and sales process must do to get people from uh, just a prospect to a satisfied actual paying client. All right, so let's recap here. What have we learned from today? So number one is your chamber membership is a great investment. Uh, be active, be involved, partic participate in the uh, chamber so that you can make the most of it and always follow up with every new person that you meet. Decide what the next best course of action is. Do they need to go into your marketing process? Do they need to go into your sales process? And make sure that each of those processes are systemized, that you've tested and measured, that it, they're proven, that, that they actually work. So uh, make sure you have key indicators that you look at every single month to, to confirm that. And then number six on here is because marketing and sales is, is predominantly psychology, then learn psychology. Use uh, the information that I shared with you today, and it will absolutely make your marketing and sales process much more effective. All right, so let's do a, a Menti here to, to close out. Grab your phones, menti.com, plug in that code. And what I'd love to hear is, what is the number one thing that you learned from my short presentation today? And I say short because usually like uh, next week I'm doing a four hour training. So uh, 40 minutes is absolutely short for me. So what's the number one thing that you've learned from today? And I'm gonna show the results up on the screen here in this cool little word cloud. All right, get those typed in. Follow up, keep it simple. 
psychology. Yeah, check out the screen. I love how these words appear here. Uh, value, not price. Absolutely. Whoever said that, you're spot on. Creating value. Keep it simple. Follow up again. Follow, following up is important. Absolutely. Look at all those key learnings from today. I love that. Fantastic. Keep those coming in, guys. Marketing process. Yes. Really great stuff. All right. We nine people participated. I'll wait five seconds more here. Tracking leads. Yeah. Track your leads. Track your conversion rate. Uh, someone said have a system. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great way to get a business to run smoothly and predictably is by having systems and people following systems. Awesome. Lots of great learnings. Guys, Thank you so much for being a tremendous audience. Thank you again for the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce for having me be your presenter today. I look forward to many more opportunities and uh, I'm uh, officially done. I'm open to any Q&A and uh, thank you, Jenny and Mike. I'll turn it back over to you guys. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, I guess at this point, if we, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to just unmute yourself. I do have, I, actually, I do have a quick question, Juan. So what would you say is the difference between interest and desire in the ADA principle? Yeah, great question. So look at it like this. Um, you know that you're going to be buying a car in the next uh, three to six months and you're driving in the street and, and a car catches your attention or maybe a billboard catches your attention, you're interested, right? But then when you go and do a test drive in that car, now there's desire because you've actually taken it a step further. So like when you walk on the, on the car lot, you, there's interest, but when you've test drive it, the car, test drove it, now there's like desire because gosh my hair blowing in the wind and the convertible i gotta have it so hopefully that example kind of helps you understand a little bit yeah thank you so does anyone have any questions um if not i think mike do we want to do just breakouts i guess we have a few minutes 